Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In today's video I'm going to be exploring various possibilities for when you're building an SSTO in version 1.02 of Kerbal Space Program. Valentina is not looking so happy, that's because she's about to become yet another victim of my crazy adventures. Now I'm gonna start with some of the simpler designs and then explain to you some of the more advanced designs where you can actually make an SSTO that will leave you with quite a lot of uh, Delta V left to visit things like uh, Minmus or possibly even beyond. So let's start with some of the simpler designs. Now one thing to keep in mind when building an SSTO is that it doesn't actually have to be a plane. It can be a rocket and actually one of the more successful designs is a rocket. But I'm going to start with a simple simple plane. I'm going to use Mark 1 inline cockpit. I'm going to put a little aerodynamics tool here. And this is where the fun part comes in. So let's actually talk about the additional uh, parts that you can include to make this very efficient. So if you're building a very small SSTO just to kind of lift off and reach space or on uh, on a you know single engine sort of a plane or a rocket, what you want to include is I believe it is under here aerodynamics. Nope, I'm incorrect. I am incorrect because it is not in here. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, I found it. Uh, so one of these things. I kind of like engine precooler a little bit more, and I do have a feeling it's a little bit more efficient. What this does is it's essentially uh, an additional air intake, plus there's a bit of fuel enough to, for you to basically uh, lift yourself to upper atmosphere. Now, that's part one. Part two that you may want to attach is something of... Uh, um, so this is, depends on the engine you'll be using, but for now we're just going to use a, a, an engine that was meant for this, a Repure engine. So I'm going to attach half a tank, because that's usually enough for a Repure engine to take you to to space. Uh, so let's stack on a Repure engine right here, and looking good so far. So what, what we need is we need some wings and control. And I prefer to use, for smaller planes, I prefer to use something much lighter than usual. So something that's... Uh, something like this, even though it's so ugly, it's, these are actually very, very light and they provide enough lift for you to actually, um, to fly. Now, make sure that you place your lift kind of where the mass is, because otherwise you're going to spin out of control everywhere, and that's good enough. Now, just for control, we're going to add a couple of um, elevons right here on this side here, in this kind of manner. No, not like that at all. Here we go, just like this. This will give us a little bit of control. Now the thing is, you can attach um, a winglet, and I, I always suggest to do it because otherwise you'll be spinning out of control. But there's a very, 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 very high chance that they'll actually, um, they'll basically explode and or burn out. So instead of a winglet, I will actually attach a structural wing type D because these survive much longer. They actually do not burn burn out as easily and they serve the same purpose of stabilizing your ship. You won't be able to control your ship obviously, but you will be more stable laterally. So your spin will not uh, your ship will not spin out of control. And of course what we are missing now are the wheels. And looks like this ugly ship is ready to go. We don't have to really name it because this is just a prototype, just to show you that it's very, very easy to build a simple SSTO, uh, even in version 1.02, just using a repair engine. So this is part one, repairs! I'm gonna choose Valentina Kerman for this, and let's go. And essentially, this is the ship that will most likely be a little bit overpowered for this type of situation. You may also want to keep track of your engine and possibly even manually change its mode. But as you can see, this actually controls really, really well. It's a very, very stable ship, despite its not so stable looks. And it will actually get us to space quite easily. So right now, I'm going to be blasting up until about 10 kilometers. And at this point, I'll start to level out just a little bit because you want to reach a speed of approximately 16, okay, now 15 to 1600 meters per second by the time that you reach an altitude of about 20, 22 kilometers. That is because after this, your engine becomes a lot less efficient quite dramatically. You will actually lose efficiency very, 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 very quick. And uh, this is unfortunately a new addition where basically the engines have an optimal speed at which they are very efficient. For this engine, it's, I believe, 3.6 Mach, which is approximately something like uh, 12, no, maybe 1300 meters per second, maybe 1500 meters per second. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. We're actually about to reach it, and I sh think I leveled out a little bit too fast. I'm already going really fast, but here we're just using... Oh, okay, I need to disable this thingy because otherwise my game will crash. Uh, here you can see that... Yeah, there we go. So we're 
going just at the right speed. And right now, I could have actually had more. Sometimes I have 1600. Right now, I'm going to manually toggle mode in a few seconds. Right about now. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Manual. Oh no, 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 no. Toggle mode. There we go. All right. So now we just have to reach the. Actually, that's good enough. That's good enough. Uh, so now we just have to wait until we get to this point and level out. And essentially, that is the simplest possible SSTO you can make. Um, you will not have much fuel left, but you have enough to return back to Kerbin. So here, once we level out, uh, we'll have about, you know, a hundred, not even a hundred, actually possibly even less, uh, delta V left. And that's because I actually did not plan my, my ascent path perfectly. I just kind of winged it. Uh, the thing is, when you're actually uh, trying to reach that um, that point up there and going through the atmosphere, make sure that your nose is aligned with the prograde marker, because otherwise you're going to be... Look, here, I'll just show you what I mean by this. If, if I do this suddenly, I'm going to lose a lot of speed, because I'm actually just flying pancake, as I call it. So make sure you, you fly this way. Um, so don't, don't fly away from this marker. All right, so right about now I can actually start circularizing, I think. And this will give me... A pretty good circular orbit. And essentially this is the simplest design. Uh, very, very simple, you know, it's enough to get to space and to the orbit and enough for you to explore space on a very kind of a unique but somewhat uninteresting craft. Alright, so that's that's it. I'm gonna stop here for this part. Now let's go with the next engine. Let's actually talk about other engines as well. So I'm gonna erase this craft for a second and show you something else you can create. So a lot of people, uh, including myself, discovered that you can actually do the following. So you can actually attach uh, one of these tanks and then uh, two more of these tanks. And this is something I did in my previous design actually. And then these two tanks will be followed by um, the turbojet engine. The turbojets will be enough to take you to essentially to the upper atmosphere. But here, this is where it gets interesting. Instead of putting a repair engine, a lot of people decided to start putting these things, aerospikes, because if you look at the aerospike information, you'll discover that it actually is a lot more efficient in vacuum. It has 340 ISP than a repair engine, which only has 305. So this means that when you're uh, circularizing your orbit, if you have an air spike in here, and this is, I, I, I posted this in my previous video, if you have an air spike in here, you're going to save a lot more fuel than you would with a repair engine. So essentially for, you know, for larger tanks, for larger craft, this is a lot more efficient than this. Uh, but I'm not going to do this credit because I did this in a previous video. So instead, I'm going to show you something a little bit different. This is something I found out when I was, you know, trying to build something bigger using maybe two error spikes or three error spikes. And I, I think I actually went for a rocket. I, I was actually building a rocket. So here I was building a beautiful rocket and trying to figure out what am I going to do? I want to I want to use a similar design, you know, using um, error spikes and using uh, the turbojet engines just to get to the upper atmosphere. But I want to have more delta V and I want to have uh, you know, more efficient craft. So I was thinking about it and thinking about it, and then I finally looked around and I found this that I discovered, rediscovered that apparently Poodle Engine is actually even more efficient than Aerospikes. So this here, for for bigger craft, for something that needs a little bit more, um, you know, boost, instead of using two, three Aerospikes, actually I think two Aerospikes should be the limit. If you need to use three Aerospikes, don't use Aerospikes, use the Poodle. And I actually did build a craft with a poodle and it was a lot more efficient. I had so much more Delta V left after I finished building it. So I believe what I did was, um, actually I did not use this. I used this Mark 1 cockpit. And then what I decided to do is I added a few, actually no, first of all I had this here, which this contains um, liquid fuel and oxidizer. And then I basically kind of just added a bunch of uh, fuselage and because it was getting so heavy, I needed to use a different engine. I actually had to use two or three of these, but instead I, I attached this thing at the end. And um, it had just enough delta V to uh, help me circularize in the upper atmosphere. But here was the, here there was a little problem. And this actually helped me discover a completely new technique to taking off from Kerbin that is very, very, very efficient. I. I actually even gave it a name. I call it uh, moonshotting or shotting for the moon. So moonshotting is uh, essentially, it's really simple. It's um, 
realizing that you can actually fly really, really fast in the lower atmosphere and you can gain some incredible speed with no r real loss for a fuel or anything else. And that can be done with some crazy, crazy, crazy um, engine velocity that doesn't really, you know, doesn't really destroy anything. So here, I'll show you what I mean by this. I'm going to show you how moonshine works. So this is uh, a rocket that I want to put in the orbit in the uh, um, upper atmosphere. I may actually need more fuel for this, though. Do I have enough? I'm not sure if I have enough. Uh, but you know what? Let's just, just try this first. So I'm going to have this. And what I'm going to do is I'll show you how moonshotting works. And for this, I'll need to use this fuel tank right here. This is actually a much smaller. It's the smallest fuel tank that we currently have that allows for... Because I think they removed the toroidal fuel tanks and the other ones are not, not good enough. So they don't actually have engine attachments. So this is what we need to use. But here, you may want to remove all the oxidizers because you won't be needing it. Remove the oxidizer and then attach this here. Attach this here just because this, you may have some extra fuel left. And on top of this, we're going to put a an air intake. And on the bottom, you guessed it, we're going to be putting a turbojet engine. Now here's the beauty part or beautiful part you can essentially do the following you can clone these let's i think six should be enough clone these just make sure that they're separated from the other engine and there we go beautiful i just this is good enough now i want to i want to change this a little bit i want to make it pretty i want to i want my craft to be pretty it's gonna be a pretty face this is a pretty face craft it's a good guy good enough oh it's not aligned not aligned it is not yeah, I, I, here we go. All right, so good. So, can you guess what's going to happen now? We are essentially going to literally shoot for the moon. And why are we going to do that? Well, because these are the most powerful atmospheric engines. They have incredible power. You can actually, uh, if you use an en re Redux Engineer, it shows you how powerful they get. So, look at the TWR right now. It's rated 4.02 on the surface. This means that I'll be going really fast as I'm raising my altitude it's going to fall a little bit but as i'm increasing my max speed up to mach 3 look at that it goes to like 12 12 twr it's, we're gonna shoot so fast through the atmosphere that nothing will stop us and we're very likely to actually reach apoapsis just by using these engines and the rest of the uh journey we're, we're going to circleize using the poodle engine because it is a little bit more efficient now, obviously, as you increase the speed, these engines will become less and less efficient until at some point they just uh, stop working. Uh, so this is when you switch to these engines. If you don't want to use an SSTO, you can just dump these using um, the radio decouplers. Keep forgetting the name. Um, but I prefer to use an SSTO, so I just keep these for, for uh, you know, if you have extra fuel left, you can use these for safe descent as well. You can just uh, blast them at the last moment before your ship touches the ground. So let's try this again. So I'm going to show you how this works. And I just realized, I totally forgot something. I forgot the important part, the most important part of this journey. I'm going to attach the lightest possible winglets because without the, wing, without the winglets, you will actually lose control of your ship and it will start spinning out of control. Uh, so this is 0.1. I think these are good enough, 0 0.07, 78 kilograms. All right, so just attach them here and that should give us enough stability to fly through the upper and lower atmosphere. And once you launch your craft, you can even start... Um, moving into a more lateral or um, pathway already you can actually start your gravity turn because this will allow you to uh, to get to the orbit more efficiently so if you, if you look at my speed here it's already really really high and I'm already going way above terminal velocity but that's okay because we're not really wasting that much fuel essentially what we're trying to do here is gain as much lateral and as much um, horizontal velocity as possible before these engines burn out and before we have to start circularizing using the poodle engine all right so that's getting really 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 nice and I need to disable this start my poodle and here okay I need to stop this for a second I'm gonna start moving sideways so that I can start getting to that orbit and because I have, look at that, I have 1500 delta V left. I can easily get into orbit right now and it will not really be very difficult. So this was like one of the fastest launches possible probably. I don't think I've ever had a faster launch than using the moonshotting technique. Can I copyright that? Yes, please. 
All right, so uh, this is not going to be a perfect orbit, obviously, but you know what? I don't, I don't really mind. Uh, 100 kilometers, that's not too bad. Let's just try to see what where I need to aim to get into this particular orbit. And okay, a little bit higher than that. Ah, good enough. And 1500 meters. All right, we'll just we'll have just enough to get into somewhat uh, circular orbit. That's because I didn't actually put enough fuel. I could have put another tank and be absolutely fine with it because my, my TWR right now is more than one and you can you can actually have up to or down um, down to like 0.7 and still get into orbit uh, so it doesn't really have to be that high at all but essentially this is how you can do it using uh, just a bunch of radially attached um, turbo jets just to essentially cannonball yourself or shoot yourself up into the air and get that necessary apoapsis and then essentially circularize at once you get to this point. It is not, it's definitely not the most efficient way, but it definitely works and it's, it's kind of what gave me an idea for my next design, which I'm going to show you in a second, because I realized that even with the Poodle engine, I'm still not very efficient, of course. This is uh, 350 ISP or uh, impulse. Uh, and with 350 ISP, I am basically wasting a lot of this liquid fuel because it's not a particularly efficient design. So you'll see that um, even after I get into this orbit, I'll still have... Um, I, I, I won't really have that much Delta V left. And so instead I decided to start, you know, start exploring things again and try to figure out, can I make this even more efficient? And the answer was, yeah, you can. And how, you may ask? Well, of course, by using... Yes, you may have guessed it by using the not so favorite anymore, not so nice, not so special nuclear engines, nerves. And what nerves? How can you use nerves for this kind of business and stuff? Well, it's actually because they're still really efficient in space. They're just not efficient on the ground anymore. So as long as you start them, you know, in a higher atmosphere, you'll actually be able to get relatively uh, efficient spacecraft. So I'm going to show you how it's done. Oh, and the other thing is, now, uh, nerve uh, or at atomic rockets, they basically just use uh, nothing but a liquid fuel. And if you actually compare liquid fuel tank, which is right here, to a non-liquid fuel tank, you'll notice that this one has a little bit more fuel, but they have the same weight. So you'll actually kind of waste less fuel as well. So in a sense, it will require less weight and it will give you more delta V per uh, per unit of weight. So it's a little bit more efficient now than it used to be. So nuclear engines are actually still really good. Now, what I did to to get this really efficient craft that I'm going to show you um, after I launched this is I basically removed all this. I decided, hey, I don't need this anymore. Goodbye. But I still kept this though because it kind of gives you a little bit of lift and it looks pretty. I mean, this is definitely not the most efficient way of doing this, but it just looks prettier than it would have otherwise. I removed all the oxidizers because I don't really need it anymore. And then I attached uh, these right here, these liquid, liquid fuel fuselages. Uh, attached a bunch of them. You, can, you don't have to use these. You can actually, if you, if you don't mind the ugly looks, you can just slap on this and, you know, call it a, a flying brick or something. Basically, just do this. Here you go. Flying box, flying brick. Because this has a lot more liquid fuel and it essentially uh, provides this. You know what? I've... I want to try it. I want to just try this. Let's try this. This kind of looks funky. Uh, so this has... F uh, oh, oops, I attached the wrong thing. This is a liquid fuel one. Uh, sorry, the oxidizer one. This is what I wanted. That is what I wanted right here. It has 5,000 liquid fuel as opposed to only 800 gear. So, all right, so let's see what happens. Now, I need to make sure that I have enough of these engines. And to, to do this, I will need to attach a quad coupler here right right here there we go and then put four nuclear engines and uh, I might not be enough TWR actually but we'll see we'll see how it goes I haven't done this design yet but let's see if it works it looks super ugly it's awesome I love it now for this particular craft though I probably will need eight engines so let's see if eight works and eight oh okay doesn't actually give me enough for me to propel myself super high up and then even higher in the higher atmosphere it won't be as much let's decrease this to 4000 all right maybe that's a little bit too much of a tank for this to handle may need to put more engines if, if you want to do this design you may have to just put more nuclear engines but i just want to use four for now let's see if this flies well all oh, right okay this look this is looking better 
Uh, and I guess eight should suffice. And yeah, that's good enough. You know what? That's good enough. So look at that. So, super ugly. This is, does not get uglier than this. But look at the stats here. We have relatively high delta V. Not not as high as the other one, but still quite high. Then um, yeah, then we can get to about nine, almost ten in total. And this will be uh, 0.5. I don't know if that's enough. 0.5 might not be enough, but but we'll find out. We'll find out by launching this. So let's see how this flies and if it actually even works. Because for all we know, this might not even fly that well. Well, so far so good. It is kind of flying-ish. I'm gonna try to... I'm not gonna get into as a steep of um, uh, ascent as with the last uh, craft because this one... I, I don't think it will have as high of a speed, unfortunately. But we'll try to get as, as much as we can. Let's try to shoot ourselves as high up as we can. And then we're gonna use nuclear engines to do the rest. Oh my god, you're so ugly, but I love it. I love it. Look, it's working. It's working. It's getting really hot, though. And right about now, I'm going to engage my nuclear engines. There we go. And we have 0.60 WR. I need to make sure that I'm flying in the right direction. I'm going to wait for this to get to about 75, 80. And start getting to slightly more circular orbit. And after a few minutes, you'll notice that things will start overheating, especially the engines. But honestly, so far, I, I'm yet to see them explode, even after like three, four minutes of burning. Um, I only have four minutes of fuel left anyway, so I'm pretty sure they're not going to explode. Uh, but I do need to try to get into orbit, so I'm going to show you that this is actually quite a possible way of making new SSTOs. So this is basically a prototype, alpha prototype for what could become potentially the new technique for getting to orbit. And just the last burn here, 121 meters per second to get into perfectly circular orbit at around, what is it, 70, 72 kilometers. So that is yet another way of getting into space in version 1.02. Here, basically all you need is turbojets and nuclear engines. Now, as far, as far as I'm concerned, as long as you can get here, there's so many possibilities for you to basically explore the rest of the universe and galaxy. Or I guess not galaxy, but the Kerbal system. And one of those possibilities is, is of course attaching ion engines. So this is how I have achieved a design that essentially when it gets to this part, and I'm talking about SSTO design, it can then use ion engines to propel itself to other parts of the Kerbal system. Uh, I'm going to show you the one that I kind of just prototyped very recently that essentially is, you know, has enough to get to Minimus. And it's super ugly as well. It doesn't really have anything going for it other than the fact that when you get to this part, you have something like 2000 Delta V left. Uh, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's doable. It's possible. So SSTOs are not dead yet. They're still around and you can still make one as long as you use a combination of different engines. All right, so I believe this is an orbit. Yeah, good enough. So there you go. And I still have 773 meters per second left. This is enough to uh, do nothing, really. <laughs> it's not enough to uh, um, to get to the moon, I think, is it? I don't think that's enough to get. And I'm also, I'm not in the right, I'm not even in the right plane. I wasn't really watching my plane while I was taking off. Yeah, I'll need a lot more to get to the moon. So definitely not the moon but you know what if as long as you actually uh change this design a little bit and possibly attach more fuel more, more nuclear engines and obviously a lot more jet engines as well you can easily create a very large but you know quite efficient ssto that is capable of going far places and seeing new people uh let me show you the one with ion engines now this is the ion engine design that i was talking about i'm just going to finish my circularization i need to do this for 64 more meters per second and it has over 2000 delta v left so this actually has enough to get to minimus to get to the moon and to escape um carbon gravitational pool as well so this is a, a basically a design that combines three types of engines just like we did in the earlier uh, versions of the game except that this time you have to use a slightly more different technique so first of all you have for your first uh, lower atmospheric stage, you have the turbojets and you need a lot of them to, to get some of the rockets into that particular um, predicament. Then you have nuclear engines and you may need four or possibly eight to essentially... Uh, ooh, what's going on here? Why am I not turning? 
No electricity? Yes, electricity. All right, good. Uh, so yeah, nuclear engines to finish your circular circularization like I'm doing right now. Even though my rocket is not obeying my commands. Why is it not obeying my commands? Uh, come on, rocket. It's not listening to me. Anyway, uh, and then you have iron engines. Now, the mistake I made, obviously, and this was really not on, uh, not because I was planning to use these. I just attached them just to see if I can actually have them in front so that uh, they can survive the, uh, the takeoff. And as you can see, they survived everything. Even though I was burning like crazy, the antennas are still fine. And so are the... Um, the new uh, the iron engines here now don't put these in front this is actually I knew I know that you're not supposed to put these in front because your ship will wobble if you do and I'll show you what I mean by this when, once I enable them uh, but I, I do need to disable these engines first um, because they will actually uh, your ship will wobble quite a lot and so if you have them in front let me show you what I mean by this so it will not be very stable unfortunately so you need to make sure that these are somewhere in the back uh, past your uh, center of mass, um, but yeah, the, essentially this is this is a prototype for a possible interstellar, not interstellar, but interplanetary uh, spaceship that is an SSTO and can quite easily become, um, you know, a future of SSTO flight in Kerbal Space Program version 1.02. So, a combination of turbojets, nuclears, and ion engines. Obviously, not the most beautiful or not the most. Um, a static design and quite not a very efficient as well but it works and you do definitely have enough delta v to get yourself oh it actually just increased to 2843 that is awesome not sure if that's correct but it could be even more than i thought it was obviously this will take quite a long burn if you look here it will take me hour and a half just to get that particular delta v and that's this is something I'm, i've learned to expect with ion engines i've used them a lot before you know it's a very slow burn you have to do several pass bys burning a little bit at a time and it will probably take hours just to escape uh, just to escape carbon cur and then get to a different planet if you are landing on minimus you'll be using nuclear engines to essentially stop circularize because there's still quite a lot of fuel left inside here somewhere there we go there's still quite a lot of liquid fuel left for you to use these for landings and takeoffs from smaller planetary planetary bodies anyway so this is basically uh, the designs I found so far. If you have a different idea, if you have found different designs for SSTOs, uh oh, I think we're falling. I forgot to circularize. I was talking too much. No, this is gonna all get destroyed soon. I need to retract these. Um, let's see how if it survives the um, the re-entry as well. I'm kind of curious about that. But yeah, if you have a different design that you found that works for you. Uh, using some kind of a different combination or something else, not using the so-called moonshot. I actually stole that term from Google because they use that for, uh, it's it's their way of saying crazy idea. And this is a pretty crazy idea. You essentially just shoot up really, really fast and try to get as much velocity as possible, ignoring safety and everything else. But yeah, if you have a different design, please post it in the comments below and maybe possibly even a picture. Send me a picture or send me a comment. Um, and if you would like this craft, I can also post that as well. But you know what? This is not particular. This is not my proudest moment in Kerbal history. I'm just kind of happy that it actually works. But definitely not the most beautiful, and definitely not the most efficient design. Anyway, this has been what the math with exploration of different models and different SSTOs possible in Kerbal Space Program version 1.02. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. There's more coming, and like this video, leave a comment. Thank you guys. And game you later. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to accelerate time and we'll see what happens. And here we are flying through the atmosphere, nothing got destroyed. It's a good thing I brought this puny, puny parachute. We're gonna actually deploy it right now, <laughs> even though it's not gonna do anything. But we're gonna try to use the engines to land safely, because safety is our priority at Kerbal Space Program. And according to Bill Kerman, 
who is currently very, very upset with the situation he's in, uh, it is very imperative for him to return home safely and in one piece. Oh, this is not looking so good. We're spinning too much. Release the parachute! Release the par- Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, 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 let go, let go. Oh, no, 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 other way, other way, other way. Oh, this way, this way. And... Ah, good enough. Partial success. Almost complete success. There we go, excellent. And that is how you do Kerbal Space style landing using SSTO. Those engines, nobody... And these engines too, nobody really cared about them anyway. Anywho, thank you for watching guys, and bye bye. Geronimo! Uh, Geronimo! Geronimo! Hey, this is what it looks like from, from this side. I always wanted to see what it looks like from this side. Alright, let's go home. Our mission is done! This is success!